Welcome everyone to Sasquatch Theory. In this episode, we have a gentleman who wants to share his eye sighting report from the state of Washington. The man claims he was driving to his remote cabin in the wilderness when he spotted a large creature walking across the road. The creature quickly reacted to the man's presence and spider crawled into the woods. For me, this was a very genuine encounter, and you can really hear the fear in this man's voice as he recalls his encounter. Sasquatch like to mimic wildlife, and it's no surprise to me that they will spider crawl to avoid being seen. A lot of times, these creatures do not walk upright, so if they're on all fours, they don't seem to have a certain form or shape to them. They could easily appear as a log or possibly a bear. So I know many of you guys are going to recall back to the past to maybe a moment that you saw something black shoot through the woods. It could be possible. It was a Sasquatch. If you have a Bigfoot eye sighting you would like to share with us, you can contact me at SasquatchTheory at Outlook.com. If you enjoy Sasquatch Theory, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. I wouldn't be able to do this without everyone's support, so your participation really helps out the channel. And that's thumbs up, comments, views, and coming back to the channel. And for the people that always support the channel, I really appreciate it. This is something bigger than ourselves. It's something bigger than just a regular YouTube channel. This is about Sasquatch and the unknown. So by watching this channel, you help support the truth and bringing out new stories to the surface. All right, guys, let's dive into this next Bigfoot encounter from the state of Washington. This was uh, it was quite a quite a 15, 20 minutes of my life. I've been uh, searching off, you know, interested in and searching since '69, and have gone all over the country. Lived on the East Coast for a while. Did some searching up in Vermont and New Hampshire, um, but nothing. I wouldn't call myself a researcher. I just. I'm an adventure motorcycle rider, so I'm always out for two, three days, a week or two at a time, uh, riding around in the mountains and camping. So I'm always aware. I put out audio recorders. I haven't really got much. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we have uh, property in Ocean Shores, Washington. And it's a, it's quite a hot spot. I, I didn't really know that until we started looking for property there. But um, everybody in town just accepts the fact that, that Sasquatch is there. Um, we, we think that they come down from the Olympic Mountains in the winter and uh, feed on the, on the coast there in the, on the beaches. Um, apparently there's some, some, uh, a couple at least that stay there year round because people see them all year round. I saw this one in August when they should have been up in the, up in the mountains, but, uh, there's kind of a known pathway that they get to the beach, uh, between these two roads. And I just happened to buy my property smack dab between these two roads. Um, it wasn't a coincidence. I was looking for a piece of property in between those roads. So every night when we're there, we're there probably one to two weekends a, a month all year round. We just pull our trailer in. We've got a shed and a generator and solar and all that. Um, every night before we, when we, we all go to bed, I'm always the last one in. I, everybody goes in and gets settled and I put the fire out. And I like to put my headlamp on and go out uh, on the road down my driveway and spot for deer um there is other oh, resident herd of deer it's got to be in the hundreds 
maybe even a thousand and they're tame because there's no hunting there and there's some black bear and there's a cougar or two and some coyotes but that's it so they'll come right up to you we've had them come right up to our campfire and let us pet them so i always go out on the road and spot for deer um the north and southbound lanes of ocean shores boulevard has about a 25 or 30 foot median strip between it which is a grassy ditch and the deer love that and they're always out there at night I'll, I'll shine my headlight and I'll see 20, 30, 40 deer up and down right in that area. But this night, it was early August, I believe. I went out there, shone, shined my headlight, and there was absolutely no deer. And I thought, oh, that's kind of, it's kind of odd. I mean, it's not totally unusual, but most of the time, especially on an almost full moon, there's there's a lot of deer out. So I turned my headlamp off and was just looking up and down the road and I'm just kind of enjoying the, the peace and quiet. And uh, I look north to the sides, this cross street, Polaris. And um, I saw somebody walking in the northbound lanes away from me on the shoulder of the road. And this is about 11 o'clock at night, which is kind of weird. There's usually not people walking around, but it is a pretty safe community. So it didn't alarm me too much. Um, in hindsight now, I realize it wasn't a person walking, but I'll, I'll get to that. But this uh, this thing just was walking away from me. No, no big deal. It never turned to see me. Um, and then it just turned left immediately and took like three big steps across two lanes of the highway. And I thought, wow, that's a big guy down there, you know. And he could have, it could have walked on that cross street and went right to the beach but it didn't it went about 20 feet past the cross street and went down through the grassy ditch and when it went down into the ditch something caught my attention somewhere else i turned away for just a quick second and when i turned back around um oh, um god I, I get to this part and uh i gotta take a breath it, the hair on my neck is just standing up <laughs> Take but what, happened, um, what came out of that ditch came out on all fours and it crawled out of the ditch and it crawled up onto the road now it had one arm paw i i my mind had told myself it was a big dog and that guy was just walking his dog you know because i had no i had no sense of reality of what what this could be you know your mind just you know i, I guess as humans we have to come up with something of what it is we can't just let it go and i came up with a big dog but it had its right, it's either right or left, I believe it was its right front hands extended out, and it was in the middle of one of the lanes, and one of its back legs, its feet, was extended out, and it was still on the shoulder of the road. And I went up and measured, and that's over 10 feet. So sprawled out, it was 10 feet long. And I couldn't see any, there was a street light right down there, too. It was right underneath a street light, if you can believe it. It's crazy. There's like one street light every mile, and this thing was right under the street light. And I could see, I couldn't see any street light under its belly. So its belly was basically touching the ground. And I'd say, I went and measured it, it was just over 200 feet from where I was standing. Um, its back, its shoulders were approximately three feet off of the ground. So its belly's on the ground, and its shoulders are three feet off, and its belly's touching the ground. And it sprawled out over 10 feet long. So I just watched it. It never looked at me. It just, with purpose, it wasn't fast, but it was with purpose. It didn't stop. It went across that road and disappeared into the bushes. And the woods and the bushes down there are so thick that we tried to cut a driveway in, just me and my wife with a chainsaw and, and whatnot. And we only made it a foot in two days. So we had to hire somebody with heavy machinery to come in because it was impossible. But right where it crossed was a deer trail but this deer trail was only about three feet tall. So I'm sure it came across in preparation to crawl down that deer trail. It could never walk through it. It would have had to have crawled. But right when it got to the woods, its back end came up in the air. Its front stayed down, but its back end, its butt came up in the air. And some people have explained it to me, and it, and it hit me really hard. It looks like a linebacker on the front line of a football game. That's the way it entered the woods. But it came across that road in that spider crawl. And man, when I, 
when I think of that thing crawling like a spider across that road, the emotions just pour out of me. I, I never, you know, I've been wanting to see one of these things since 1969. I just assumed I would run across the road or when I'm up on a dirt road in the middle of the mountains for a week at a time, I'd see one out in the field or a clear cut logging area or something like that. I never in my wildest dreams thought I would see my first one I see doing a spider crawl across a road 200 feet from my trailer on my property in Ocean Shores. It was nuts. And I just put it away. I didn't talk about it. I didn't think about it or nothing until I went to the Sasquatch Summit down in Ocean, down at the, it was in Ocean Shores uh, back in November. And one of the presenters was talking about urban Sasquatch sightings. I guess that's a big thing now. And he picked two areas in the state of Washington. One of them was in Seattle. And he had a circle around this area where most of them are seen down on the beach. And my house that I live in where I'm sitting in right now is smack dab in the middle of that circle he drew. And then he started talking about another hot area, which was Ocean Shores. And he drew a circle around it. And my property was smack dab in the middle of that circle. And I raised my hand. I told him that. And everybody's like, God, that's crazy. And, I'm, and I don't know what to do. I'm just kind of sitting there like, yeah, I, don't, I don't understand what's going on. And then he brought up how one witness had seen it cross his yard in the spider crawl. <laughs> And I lost it. I started just bawling like a baby. And I'm a big guy. I'm six foot tall, 225 pounds. And I'm just sitting there in the middle of a thousand people sobbing. And this guy next to me came over and says, you okay? And I said, yeah, I got to get out of here. And I and I left. And I went out to the parking lot. And I walked around for a while and got my wits together because I had no idea what was going on with me. And uh, I finally went back in and he was still talking. And I don't know, I opened up that door and I walked in and the place got silent. I swear to God, a thousand people turned around and looked at me coming in. I was like, oh, my God. And he asked me if I wanted to talk about it. And I said, I can't talk about it right now. And so we met up afterwards and, and I told him a little bit about it. But I, at that point, I still didn't understand what I'd seen and why I was going through these emotions and what was going on with me. And it's been like that since November. Yeah, I've just been struggling with this. You know, that's not what we're supposed to see. And I wasn't afraid. I mean, now I'm terrified. But but then when I saw it, I wasn't afraid at all. I just went, huh, okay. And I went and finished putting out the fire and went in my trailer. Had I, had I realized what I had seen, because now it's clear as bell in my mind. I can see every movement of that thing now that I've realized what I've seen. I don't think I could have slept that night knowing that thing's only a couple hundred feet from my trailer crawling through the woods. Um. Yeah, so this has been a hard thing. This has been, I've been trying to find answers. I've been watching everything you put out. Um, I just got done watching that whole thing. You went with that guy's farm, um, uh, the killing fields. You know, and I'm just trying to make sense. I'm trying to find people that have seen what I have seen, you know, to, val to not validate it. I know what I saw, but to just say it's okay. You know, you, you saw this and it's, it's okay because my mind still doesn't know what to do with this. Yeah. Well, it is okay. And you absolutely did experience Sasquatch activity. And that is a known trait of their behavior. They will get on all fours and spider crawl. I've heard it many times. I've heard it on Sasquatch Chronicles. And the juvenile that I encountered, he got behind a tree and slowly hid. But when he stepped out, he had no idea I was there. But when he finally realized it, he freaked out. His eyes got really big and he shot down. And I don't know if he where he went. He just disappeared. You know, I don't know if he went into a portal. I theorized that maybe he spider crawled and kept the tree in between us both. But I think they do have the ability to do that. Absolutely. Well, I did a I did an interview with Wes on Sasquatch Chronicles a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, about this same thing and. Uh, it got me really thinking. So now, you know, I was a hunter up until 35 years ago. I stopped hunting when I got married, but I was a super avid hunter. And this old guy that had property next to uh, my family's property up in the mountains came up to me one day and he got, he had to be in his eighties. And this is back in like 1978, 79 and asked, you know, how successful I'd been hunting and I hadn't gotten anything and stuff. And we got to talking and he always told me, you never look for the body of the deer or the elk. You look for the legs, you look for the feet. 
And, you know, I, I, okay, that's great. And all this time that I've been wanting to see a Sasquatch, I've been waiting to see a figure walking. I just wonder how many of, of people that are out there searching and how many are actively looking have missed this thing because it ain't walking. It's crawling, you know, and it can look like I, I, this thing was really dark color. I couldn't tell you if it was dark, if it was black or dark brown. But if it stopped anywhere but the middle of the road, right, um, if it stopped, it would look like a log in the woods. If it if it didn't move, you would never know it wasn't a log, right? Or if people say, yeah, I saw a bear going up the side of this ridge. Well, did you look in your binoculars? Did you look in your scope and make sure it's a bear? Because I have a feeling if they hunch up a little bit and crawl, that they would look just like a bear going up the side of a hill. They really would. And I'm just really starting to wonder now what we, what we should be looking for, you know? Um, we're looking for footprints. Maybe we should be looking for fingerprints. You know, if they're on all fours and they're doing the spider thing and they're on the end of their fingers, maybe we got to look for five digits pushed into the mud, you know, at a 12 inch span or I don't know. My mind's just whirling with what the possibilities are of what we could be missing because this thing could be crawling as much as walking. Maybe that's a defense mechanism. Maybe it just drops you know, and just go silent and we're not looking for that. We're looking over the top of it. Yeah, absolutely. And you're definitely onto something there because there's a researcher, his name is Robert Kreider. And he actually talks about that exact same thing that when they get on all fours, they use their knuckles and you're not going to see a whole hand or a whole foot. You're just seeing little indentions. And when they move, you know, they make these big strides. So they don't really leave much sign behind. Yeah, and, and and I've always looked for footprints. Always look for footprints, and I've seen things. Okay, so a lot of a lot of footprints people find could be a bear, but if it's really indecisive, I bet you a knuckle print from a big Sasquatch would look like a big bear print. You know, if it's not showing claws, if it's just showing that indentation, that's that shape. We could be looking at Sasquatch knuckle prints. Yeah, you know? but something yeah. that moves as fast as a spider. I don't think would leave that much sign because they're covering a lot of ground really quick. They are. And if it's in, and if it's, if it's on, you know, up here in, in our area, it's, you know, pine trees and a lot of uh, conifers and stuff like that. And they're just going to push down the leaves. They're not going to, they're spreading their weight out on four things instead of two. Right. So that's just physics. You know, you make a bigger pad, a bigger pad, you make less indentation if you spread out your weight. So they could be so stealthy in that mode. Oh, my goodness, you know, three feet off of the ground, going frontwards, backwards, sideways, not leaving many tracks. Oh, you know, my mind just boggles with the possibilities of where these things could be, and we'd never even know they're there. Yeah, absolutely. So when you encountered the creature, did it look like a giant spider moving? It sure. Well, I only saw it going forward. Right. I didn't say it, see it turn or go sideways, but it definitely looked like a spider. It was not, its arms weren't making long movements back and forth. It was more really short things. You know, I bet you, I bet you from when it would put its hand down and then their other hand and then the other hand, it wasn't taking four or five foot strides with its hands. It was probably only going a foot or two. So it was making a lot of little motions. It wasn't making big, huge motions. Um, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, you would think it would be really fast and bounding. It was not bounding at all. It was, it was best I can describe like a spider it was taking short movements with its arms and its and its legs, you know, to follow. And that's the other thing. It it didn't, you know how. Um, I guess it's like bears. You know, they they put their their rear paw in the front paw print type of thing. This wasn't doing. I couldn't tell if it was moving a right hand and a left hand and a right foot and a left foot. I couldn't quite tell how it was doing the rear because I was looking at it from the side more, but um, it was taking very short movements with its arms and its legs. It wasn't trying to make a lot of ground up really fast. It looked like it was being, I don't know, for lack of a better word, more precise on where it was putting its, its, its hands and its feet down. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And you shared a image from, google does this look pretty close to the creature that you've seen 
It, it, yeah, and I, I can't look at that. I just, I just totally lose it. I've, I've got that picture. I show people. Oh, I've showed a couple people. Not many people know about this. Um, that's exactly the the posture it had, and that's why I, I, when I saw that image, I went looking at the summit when he said the spider crawl, and I lost it. When I went for my little walk, I started looking up a picture, and that's the picture I found. And I saw that picture, and I turned my phone off. I couldn't look at it. That was what I saw, but I saw it from the side. And just imagine in that, in that, down in that position, this thing was still almost three feet thick, you know, at the shoulders and the head from the ground. <sighs> did you get a look at the creature's face? I did like, not. Did you see the eyes? Did you see nope. any shine or anything like that? I did not. It never looked at me. That was the funny thing. It came out of that ditch and it looked dead forward. It never turned its head one way or the other. And when it came out of the ditch, you know, you can see this this area of Ocean Shores where it happened. Um, you can see in either direction, probably a quarter mile down the road. So it knew nothing was coming. They knew no cars were coming and knew nothing was there. So it didn't really care. It just was, I think it was focusing on that little trail and it was just going to get to that trail. Yeah. What do you think the creature was doing prior to you arriving at the area? I think it was just walking down the road because it was walking. It was walking upright away from me, and then I think it was looking, probably looking for that game trail. I don't think they travel down the roads there. People see them going through their backyards a lot. They see them on uh, between yards. You know, people have a fence in their yard and a fence in the backyard, but there'll be like a an easement between. They walk those fence lines. Um, they very rarely are seen on roads and ocean shores, and they very rarely are seen crossing roads. They're mostly seen in yards and on the beach. So I think it was looking, I don't think it wanted to go down that road. I think it wanted to stay off of Polaris. It was looking for that game trail. And I think as soon as it saw it, it just turned about face, turned 90 degrees to the left. And it went through that ditch, came out crawling. And I've talked to, you know, I've talked to Wes a lot about this too. And we haven't figured, I haven't figured out why it came out crawling. It could have walked across the road, then went down on all fours. But for some reason, it came out of the ditch in that spider crawl. And I'll never know why it did. You know, I maybe it got spooked. You know, um, there was nobody coming. It was dead silent that night. That's the other thing. We have a lot of crickets, a lot of frogs and stuff because it's really wet down there. And and I re distinctly, re distinctly remember some friends of mine that were there with me that night um, saying, is it always this quiet here? And I said, no, nah, it's not. You know, I just kind of blew it off. But it was super, super quiet that night. And like I said, there was no cars coming, no deer out or anything. Um, yeah, so I, I still, I'll never know why it came out on all fours. It had a reason, you know, it could have just been preparing to go down that, that, that trail. Cause it needed to get on all fours to get down that trail. But why it came across the road, I, I really don't know. Can you describe the emotions that you felt when you saw the creature? I didn't feel much of anything. I went, huh, that's kind of weird. It's kind of mm -hmm. weird. That, that guy must be, his dog must've went in the ditch. I never once thought where the guy went. Right. It wasn't until this came out of my mind. Somebody said, well, where was that guy at? I said, you know what? I never thought about why it didn't come out of the ditch. Well, of course, it was a Sasquatch. But in my mind, it was a guy walking his dog. So I, I really had no emotions. And that's that's what really hit me hard was. I think I think I think I knew what it was when I saw it. But I think my my mind said, you don't know what this is because I, I had to stay there that night. Right. You know, um, I, I don't know why my mind let me just think it was something else right there at that second. And it, it kept coming back into my mind over the next couple months before I, I actually talked about it, um, what I had seen. But I just didn't have any reference for that. I'd never heard of a spider crawl. I'd never seen that picture of a spider crawl. I I didn't have any reference point for what it could have been. So I just it mumbled around in my head. And I had planned to mention that I'd seen this weird thing down there to some people. Um, I know Scott Taylor from the BFRO just as a friend, not through the BFRO. So I was going to talk to him about it. And then it all came flooding out of my brain at that one moment. And I realized what the heck I had seen. And then this, this set me on this journey of figuring out why it did that and why he does that and what we're missing both them when they're doing that. Yeah, absolutely. And you said it, the creature got in a linebacker position. 
Yeah, it right. Crawled. It did. After it crawled across the road in the spider crawl, right before it entered the the woods, the bushes, its back end came up on the in, in the air. Its front stayed down, but its back came up. So um, there is a culvert, a, a little bit of a culvert in front of that trail, probably goes down a foot or so. So maybe it just it did it to get across that little culvert. Um, but yeah, it came right up with its butt up in the air right before it entered the bushes. And that was the other thing I, you know, in hindsight, what, you know, a dog wouldn't, for one, a dog wouldn't crawl across the road. I, I mean, there's just so many things in my brain. I was like, how could I not known what I had seen? But I've been doing a little bit of, of reading and, and stuff about how the human brain, you know, will put things in categories if we don't know what it is. And uh, I didn't know what it was. Now I know what it is. And now I've been back to my property three times since then. And I've been a little a little freaked out, to tell you the truth. I go out to my my shed about 11 o'clock or midnight and I turn off my generator. And when I go in the shed, I got to come back out of that shed into my dark property. And I'll tell you what, every time I get to that door, the hair on my neck stands up and I turn on my headlamp and I put my head out and I look both ways before I walk out the door of that shed. There's never anything there. And then my mind's OK, but it's 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 kind of messed me up because that's my my place of solitude. That's where we go to escape life, you know, and. It, I'm a little fearful down there now. Okay, so describe this area to me. Um, okay, so you said you've only been there three times since November. So is it like a vacation cabin? Or? Yeah, it's our second piece of property. We're getting ready to build a house down there for retirement. Um, but as it is right now, we have a half an acre. We have a, a shed. We have a, a four thousand watt inverter generator in the shed. We have solar panels on the roof to power our RV when we get there. We have water. A uh, nice circular driveway, big fire pit. So we'll build a house there eventually. So we go there um, 90 days a year is all you can go stay on your property until you build a permanent structure. So we go for 90 days a year. Um, during the summer, we go for a week or two at a time. And then the winter, we just go down for a weekend or two uh, here and there. So, yeah, it's uh, it's vacation. It's vacation property right now, but it will be. Um, it will be a semi-permanent residence here in the next five or six years. Okay, very cool. So it's surrounded by forest. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Also, if you Google uh, after after this uh, interview, so I'm not giving my address on, on the air, um, mm -hmm. I'll give you my address down there, and you, you do Google Earth, and you look at it, and you'll see that they can go all the way from the Olympic Mountains all the way down the coast, uh, ocean shores on like a spit on one side is Grace Harbor and on the other side is the Pacific Ocean. And it's only in like two miles wide at the widest spot and they can travel all over there in little green belts. Um, it's only about half developed and that's just it. Uh, my property is directly across the street from all undeveloped property. So they go straight through there. They go across the road. I'm sure they're going through my property because I have some game trails on my property. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I just bought a cellular game cam at Christmas time, so I've got to get down there in the next couple of weeks, and I'll set that up and get that all set up on my shed. I doubt it'll catch them because I think they know. I think they can feel the electronic, the elect electrical fields or something. But I, I, I'm going to use it for security too because I've got a lot of expensive stuff locked up in that shed. So yeah, but absolutely. Maybe, maybe I'll catch something walking across the road out out in front or something. Uh, I don't know. But yeah. uh, it just depends yeah. on how much you're willing to spend, really. Well, I bought a I bought a really nice uh, cellular game cam and hook it up to my AT and T, and it it would give me you know a picture and video every time something triggers it. Um, there's good yeah, cell reception down there, so I'm going to try that out. Um, I don't know if it's worth trying to hide it or if they know it's there, they know it's there. So put it in the open. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't figured that one out yet. I yeah, it seems to like they can detect the cameras as far as the ir or like you said some type of frequency that's being emitted from the device i think they can too i totally do now there's a researcher and i'm sure you've heard of him tom seawad and i haven't he's native american from up here he he does he's wrote some books on ape island vancouver island he does a lot of research north on the north of the island up there and Anyway, he's kind of a jerk, and, and I don't really like him, but he has some good ideas. And one thing is, when he goes out in the woods, and if anybody goes with him, he does not allow them to take anything electronic. They have to leave their cell phones back in the car, 
no and only cameras they can take are like instamatic you know click 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 they can't have any batteries nothing in them and they get pictures and they see and they hear and they find a lot of stuff up there but he's convinced it's because he doesn't take anything electronic and i kind of i'm kind of with him on that you know i mean that's why roger patterson and bob gimlin got that stuff it was just a a hand weld eight, eight, eight millimeter you know um I, I truly believe in that, but what can you do? You know, you're going to mm-hmm. carry around an instamatic camera and try to click a picture off, uh, you know, good luck, but maybe it could be done. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible, I guess. Um, you mentioned in the beginning that these creatures would come off of the mountains and go down into the rivers and the lakes when the yeah. snow thaws. Yeah. So, um, have you ever heard of the uh, of the Olympic project? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard of them. They're okay, a good well, group uh, of guys. Yeah, Derek Randalls and a couple of the other guys. I've I've met with them many many times because you know I'm fairly local. They're only a hundred and some odd miles away. <clears throat> they theorize that they come out of the Olympics in the in the winter and come down when the salmon are running and then go down to the beaches because we have thousands of clams and oysters. I mean everything's down there. I can go, you know, I can walk. At 600 feet from my property, be on the beach and be clam digging in minutes. So they think they do that now. And I agree, they probably do. But the other thing is they're seen in ocean shores all, all around the all year round. So there's got to be some that are local that stay there. Um, and since this was August, I would assume they would probably still be up in the hills. But there's this one, and it's kind of funny because the police down there, that there's a retired cop who very forthcoming with oh yeah they're here there's sasquatch all over ocean shores it's not a big deal they just kind of blow it off like yeah okay they're here Mm. he seems to think that there's a big one down there and they call him big ed or big bob or something like that that stays and that's the one most people see and that would make sense because it was august and this thing was sprawled out over 10 feet long that that would make sense it might have been something like that yeah absolutely and um what do you think is around the property that attracts the Sasquatch? Is there, are there berries, some type of water source, food, I mean, everything combined? Well, we have a lot of deer, thousands of deer down there. I mean, talk to, look up ocean shore deer. And I mean, I can send you pictures. I got videos of them coming up and letting me pet them between their antlers. So there's lots of deer. The deer aren't hunted. There's no hunting allowed on anywhere on that spit. So the deer feel safe. Um, They've got the ocean where you can dig clams, there's crab, there's mussels, there's oysters, everything right there on the beach. And uh, there's this old guy that lives there that drives on the beach um, almost every morning. He goes for a drive and he has seen them many, many times digging for clams, um, usually right at dawn and when it's really foggy out. So they have some cover. So, I mean, the food sources are immense. And then in the middle of Ocean Shores, there's this thing they call the canal or Duck Lake. It's a man-made canal that runs for about two or three miles, and it's freshwater. So they've got that, and there's fish in it. And it, it's only like maybe 100 feet across. It's just they, they, they built it for people that so they could build houses on the water and sell them as waterfront back in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, and sounds like was, a Sasquatch par- paradise. Oh, no, it is, because— mm-hmm. and. You know, the local, and here's how far it's gone. There's there's Ocean Shores, I think it's called Ocean Shores, maybe Grays Harbor, uh, uh, what do they call it, uh, Interpretive Center. It's on the North Jetty. And half of that place is, is uh, set up for Sasquatch. They've got some great stuff in there, and it's not a very big thing. And to think that half of the Interpretive Center is centered around Sasquatch, that's pretty telling right there. Yeah, absolutely. Do you yeah. plan on doing some research or having some researchers come over? I know you mentioned the trail camera, but do you plan on going pretty big with it or just kind of staying I, away from the area and kind of monitor, monitoring it? You know, there? I'm not sure. I've been, like I said, I've been reading, watching, walking around the woods. I've been down to Bluff Creek when I was younger on an expedition. It's been my whole focus of life, but it's kind of changed. You know, um, now that I've seen that, my my brain's kind of saying, you know, you're good now. You know, you got validation. You know, I was a believer before. I'm a knower now. Um, so I'm not sure how far I'm going to take it because I'm still oh, I'm still in that fearful stage now that I've seen it crawling. 
So I got to get over that. I got to get down there and I got to stay out at night on my property and I got to sit in the dark and listen and convince myself that everything's okay. Cause I don't think they're out to kill you. I think they're just another wild, just another animal that protects its young and protects its territory. You get between a mama and a baby, you know, that's people that go missing. Right. So mm. I'm not fearful of that. I'm not, I've never believed in the bloodthirsty eating campers and ripping tents apart and stuff like that. I've never, ever believed that at all. And I've taught my grandkids when they say, oh, yeah, if Sasquatch is going to bite me and tear me up. And we're like, no, no. Why would that happen? You know, and so we're, we're we we believe that aspect of it. But I think I would have been better had I seen this in the middle of nowhere than I would see it just outside the driveway of my property. I think that's the part I got to get over. Yeah. And that did is- it freak you out knowing that they hang out around people? Uh, it does now. Um, before it was just stories and wishful thinking, you know, but now I know. Now I know they're there. Now I know they are there. I mean, it's a very populated area, but it's still very rural and it's still very, there's a lot of green belt going through there. Then, like I said, if you, if you blow up, go Google Earth, Ocean Shores, and you go out a little bit, you see that whole spit, you'll be, you'll be amazed at how much green belt there is still there for things to I mean, geez, you know, have a resident herd of deer that's in the hundreds, if not a thousand. That's pretty telling right there of the habitat. Yeah. And I agree with what you said earlier that they will live in an area year round. I've seen it myself. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm sure there are some because the Olympic Projects is having great success high up on the ridges up there. But they'll be the first ones to tell you that they're they're pretty sure that most of them come out of the mountains in the winter and come down to the coast because the mountains go right to the water, basically. You get up around Lake Quinault and whatnot up there. Uh, yeah, the mountains are right there. Then there's a lake and then there's the ocean. So it's very easy for them to traverse down and go to the ocean. All those all the rivers that are running out of the mountains are full of salmon. I mean, just you can walk across some of them on top of the salmon when they're running. So the food source is immense. And uh, it doesn't, it gets even better when they get down to ocean shores with all the deer. Yeah, absolutely. Have you talked to any of the neighbors and maybe asked them what they've seen? Or if they've seen um, anything not, weird? Not necessarily like neighbors that live next to me, but I've talked to locals. And uh, it's kind of funny. I was in the IGA one day getting uh, groceries and I just mentioned because it was a Sasquatch summit and um, I had my shirt on. She says, Oh, what's that? And I told her and she goes, Oh, yeah. And I said, so, you know, Sasquatch is pretty big here. And she goes, oh, yeah, they're here. I know. And then she just went on and kept on checking my groceries <laughs> like it was nothing. And I was like, wow, OK, uh, that's that's cool. You know, yeah, there's uh, and I've been down there long enough now that we're considered local when we go into these places. So the locals will open up a little bit about stuff. But every single person that I've asked about Bigfoot or Sasquatch, they either have a story or they're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, they're here. I mean, it's so matter of fact, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, I don't know where you're located, but if you ever get up to the Pacific Northwest, we, you know, you got to just at least you know, take a ride around the area, around ocean shores and up the coast there and, and see the habitat, you know, and if, if you're ever up here and we can hook up, you're more than welcome to come stay at our property with us and, and just sit there in the middle of the night and just experience the coyotes. A lot of coyotes go off. Um, yeah, it's just, oh, you know, and, and other people have told me, once you, once you've seen one of these things, you'll go back you know, start thinking about the past of things that have happened and that you had no, you couldn't categorize and you'll know why. And we have had some weird things happen on our property that I, that I just kind of blew off. And one of them is my wife, we go down to the beach and she, we pick up shells and she drills holes in the shells and then she hangs them from trees and like these wind chime collage things on our property. And a lot of times we'll come there and there'll be some of the shells will be missing. They'll be on the ground underneath it. And a, and a few times it's because the wire that she used rusted out and they fell. But I've seen several that the wire was untwisted and the shells were taken off. So you yeah. tell me an animal besides a man that can twist wire, untwist wire and take shells off. And when I saw those, I just told her, yep, yeah, the wire broke. I didn't want to say nothing to her, but I put that in the back of my brain. Um, 
another thing was we don't have dogs. We're cat people, so we don't take any animals with us to our property, obviously. And we showed up one day, and we pull in, and we we get out of our truck, and you know those dog beds that you can buy at like Costco that are cloth, and they've got like a ring around them so the dog can lay inside? Mm-hmm. There was one of those laid out perfectly right next to my campfire pit. And every time we leave, I always take a picture of my fire pit so I know if somebody has came and had a fire there. And nothing in the fire pit had been disturbed, but right next to the fire pit was this big dog bed, just laid out perfectly next to my fire pit. God, I got to yeah. wonder about that one. I have no idea what was going on with that. I figured a bear drug it over or something, but it was laid out. It wasn't messed up or nothing. It was perfectly placed like something was laying inside that. Uh, crazy. I don't know. Just little things like that, that you just kind of blow off but now i'm thinking back you know i'm putting the pieces together i guess yeah absolutely that's one thing that a sighting will do to a person is unlock past memories that you just brushed off and thought were weird and you're able to put them together a little bit better you know yeah because there was a lot of stuff that happened to me as a teenager that i just pushed off also um you know because we i spent almost every single weekend year round up in the mountains from the time i was about 12 until 19 18 19 years old we had property way up in the cascade mountains and you know i had seen tree structures but back then this is the 70s who knew right but i've seen those i've seen multiple x's and crosses and teepees we always thought that there must be some mountain man living up here and building these teepees right (laughs) you know stuff like that that we just blew off as teenagers and uh, the one, though, that I never blew off, the one that I kept in my brain this whole time, and I never told anybody about it, was going down a hillside up in the Cascade Mountains. There's a there's a creek called Tainum Creek, and we were coming down the hillside in my Jeep, me and a buddy, not on a trail. This is back before Tread Lightly, right, where you would just take off through a field on a Jeep and tear it up. Pretty embarrassed that I did that, you know, now, but that's just the way we lived back then. And we were coming down this really steep hillside and there was nothing on this hillside, just grass, except one tree. There was one tree on the hillside. And uh, underneath this tree on the ground was a red plastic motorcycle gas tank. And we were motorcyclists, but we were in my Jeep at that day. And I thought, that's kind of weird. Why is there a motorcycle gas tank laying out here? And it was in really bad shape or we'd have taken it with us. So I just threw it back down on the ground. After I looked at it, we just continued on our way. Know, about five or six hours later, we're coming back up that hill on our way back to camp. And that motorcycle gas tank is up in the tree about 10, 12 feet up is where the first branches came out. And it's up in that tree balancing in the crook of the branch and the tree just balancing up there. <laughs> you know, I guess somebody could have tossed it up there, and maybe got lucky and it's stuck between that branch. But that's just something that I've never figured out ever. Yeah, that is unusual. Um, This may not be connected to your story, but do you guys see any orbs, UFOs, missing dog signs, or missing people reports? There's always missing animal, missing dog, missing cats up at the IGA to have a big board. And that's one thing I've noticed. There's always a lot of missing animals down there. Um, But it's also about half of the people live down there year-round, and about the other half are like me that uh, come and go. So, you know, I never put much stock into that. Um, As far as orbs and stuff like that, I never have, but now I'm really conscious of that. So I'm going to be looking. We don't have fireflies down there. So anything that we see that's lit up in the, in the trees and the bushes is going to be not natural. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, yeah, I've never seen any now I've, I've seen, I've seen a UFO when I was younger. So the UFO thing is just, Of course we have those. I think we're very conceited to think that we're the only intelligent life in this universe. So I think I just laugh that off. Of course there's UFOs. Of course there's other beings out there. That's a, that's, that's an absolute known to me, but, um, it's on on clear nights down there. You're so far out of the cities that man, there are so many stars out. I'll just lay down on the ground and just look at stars for hours. There's just most, vivid stars in the sky over the, over the ocean that you can imagine. But I've never seen anything out of the ordinary in the sky. But I haven't really been looking, you know. I mean, 
I look at the stars and stuff, but my whole world has kind of changed and opened up now, you know? Um, and are there, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask, are there any caves or mines in the area? Not that I know of. It's very flat. It's all man-made. So everything there, I mean, the spit of land obviously isn't, but back in the uh, late 50s, early 60s, this developer came in and was going to make this the Palm Springs of the Pacific Northwest. And he had a big golf tournament because there was a big golf course there. And, and Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr., the whole Rat Pack came up and they golfed and they had this big celebrity thing. They built a big marina, which is now since gone. Um, but it's all, all the, all the canals and the duck lake and stuff are all man-made. So it was just, um, it was just a coastal spit of land, you know? So it's, it's, it's not very high. The highest point there is like 26 feet. So in a tsunami, it's gone, (laughs) you know, it'll be gone. So yeah, there's, there's nothing that I know of. It's, it's just flat beach coast. Mm Mm-hmm. Have you heard of the Mount St. Helen stories? Yeah, I've actually been down to Ape Canyon. I've been down to the ice caves. Um, yeah, I've been all through there and I've re- yeah, yeah, it's there's some crazy stuff down there. I've I've been here my whole life. I've lived in Seattle for 59 years and I was here when the volcano erupted. I watched it erupt. I we got evacuated from there during one of the eruptions. We were hiking up there. Yeah, it's it's some crazy stuff up there in those caves. Mm-hmm. Ape Canyon, that's a hot area. I I talked to a Hollywood actor that had a sighting in that area. Yeah, so every time we're riding up there, we always try to. I always you know try to go down these. Uh, for, we always take Forest Service roads, um, and there's a Forest Service road that's now paved, but it, it's might as well not be. It's gnarly. That goes from. Uh, Morton area all the way to Mount St. Helens to Windy Ridge. And it's got all these little dirt spurs that go off of it, these little roads. And I've been up some of those. And I'll tell you what, you go one mile off of that Forest Service Road and you are in no man's land. It is so creepy up there. It is so dense. It's so, I don't know. Every time I go up there, I feel I'm being watched. Every single time I go up there. And I you say up there, is that like canyons and jagged rocks? Yeah, it's all the it's all the surrounding foothills of Mount St. Helens. So it's all up and down. There's hardly anything flat. Once you go off off of the main highway and you start going down this paved forest service road, everywhere you go is either to a river in the valley or up up into the foothills. And uh, I'm o- I'm only ninety percent of the time I'm by myself. So that's the way I like to to do things. And yeah, I've had some weird feelings up around Mount St. Helens. I don't go down there too much. It's kind of far. It's about a three, three or four hour drive just to get down to where I would go. So I don't go down there a lot, usually once or twice a year. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a whole different area down there. It's so, I hate to use the word squatchy because I feel that's kind of a TV promo type of thing. But it's definitely, uh, if you categorize Sasquatch in the paranormal category, it very, feels very paranormal-ish down there right it seems like anything could walk out from behind a tree and you wouldn't be surprised down there yeah so there's a lot of sightings in that area washington itself i mean you even get over in eastern washington over in the farmland where the where the hills come down into the farmland there's lots of sightings that they come into the farms i I guess maybe go after in the apple orchards over around wenatchee they're always seen in the apple orchards eating apples eating peaches pears all of the orchards over there um, they don't talk about it much over there because it, they need, they need the tourist dollars. Right. And they where ocean shores. They'll get their, they get their tourists from people wanting to come see a Sasquatch where the other, the, 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 the growing spots like Wenatchee and Leavenworth, they, they don't publicize it too much over there. Yeah. And that's like the hard thing about tracking Sasquatch. It's not like deer where it's like, oh, you just find the food, you know, the acorns and you'll find the deer, you know, Sasquatch, it's like they got clams, they have deer, they might go through your trash can, they might go 20 miles one way and go look for elk. It's, it's kind of hard to find a pattern on them. I mean, you can find patterns, but they're so widespread. I heard that they have a territory of possibly a 50 mile radius. 
Oh, I'd believe it. Yeah, because where the Olympic Mountains, where the Olympic Project's doing their research to my property in Ocean Shores is probably about 75, 80 miles. And I bet you they can cover that in a day, no problem, if they're really trucking. But I yeah. think we can we can we can kind of start with uh, taking a big carnivore, like a like a mountain lion or a bear, something like that, and and look where that would what what area would sustain one of those. And I think that's a good starting point. I don't think that's a telltale sign where you'd find Sasquatch. But I think that's a good starting point for a base camp, and then finger out from there. But I think that's the best we got. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people that put boots on the ground 24/7. Um, are they more of an expert than me or you? I don't know. You know, I think, you know, I think once you see one, that's really funny too, because I've ever since I saw this one, all of the videos and pictures I see, I can tell right now if it's fake or not. I just, I just laugh at some of these, like, you know, and I'm, I'll make a comment. If you've seen one, you know that this ain't one. That's my favorite thing. And, uh, and that kind of took some of the fun out of it, you know? <laughs> I've been of the yeah. mind that I hope they're never caught. I hope that we never find one because I love the mystery. I love the excitement. I love the fun of of watching new videos and seeing pictures and going out in the woods. I don't want them to be a known quantity. Um, to me, I like the I like the mystery of it. And now that's kind of kind of gone away a little bit for me. It's been replaced with some curiosity about other things, but it has lost some of its mystique. Yeah. Well, I think when they do come out with it, they'll just say, you know, they're a feral people and not to go around them, but they won't open up about the mysterious side of them. You know, as far as the orbs, you know, the portals or whatever people mention. And I think all of that's always going to be kept in the dark. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think that's just because of national security. I really do. I think if if our government can't harness it if our government doesn't know what to do with it. Um, I think that they're going to blow it off until they figure it out, or maybe they have figured it out and they just can't control it. I don't know. But um, Ocean Shores is is part of uh, the Quinault Indian Nation. And so every time during the Sasquatch Summit, they have uh, uh, they have an elder come up and, and, and bless us and stuff. And and uh, He's the same one every year, and he'll talk how he just thinks that the, their their whole nation just thinks it's kind of crazy that we have a Sasquatch summit. He says, you know, why don't you have a deer summit and a and a bear summit and a cougar summit? Because you know, Sasquatch is just another animal, just like those. You guys are putting it on this pedestal, and it's so mysterious. But to us, it's just one of the big animals that's in the woods. They just don't understand our fascination with it. Yeah. Well, do they see the Sasquatch as something good and natural per se, or is yes, it they something do. evil? Okay. No, no, not at all. But they do admit that they do use it to keep their kids around home. They tell their kids don't don't go in the woods or the bakwa will will steal you. They steal young kids and eat them, and they'll just really readily admit that that's a folk tale that they they say to to kind of keep their kids close to home and not wander off. But um, mm-hmm. no, they're just they're they're very respected. They don't go when when they know where the Sasquatch are. They don't go there. They say, this is your land. This is mine. I won't come over there. You please don't come over here. Um, if they're if they're ever fishing on the river and they catch fish and they see one, they'll leave the fish there for it because that's obviously the Sasquatch's area of the river. And they'll leave, they'll leave some fish for it. They'll take some and they'll leave some for it. And they'll tell them, thank you for letting me fish on your river. No, it's a very respectful relationship. And that's why they don't understand why we are so intent on proving it because – it's just another animal. It's it's proven to them. They 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 really they do laugh. They they laugh. They think it's kind of comical. Yeah, I can agree with that because with grizzly bears, you don't get that chance. You know, they they'll charge you and eat you alive. But so many people have come back to tell their Sasquatch story that I feel, you know, this is on another level than a bear or a mountain lion. Right. And it's just like me. You know, if you come into my house and threaten my family, I'm going to defend myself. If we go into their home, whether that's a 20 mile radius or whether it's a, a canyon or, or wherever, they're going to defend it. And of course, you know, I got no problem with that. That's why I really think when I, when I'm in the woods and I get that feeling, I leave, I don't push it because I'm getting that feeling for a reason. Maybe it's a false feeling. I don't know, but I I don't need to push it. 
Yeah. It could be possible that, you know, sometimes when these kids do go missing, you know, the parents turn around, their kid's gone. It could be one of these creatures getting back at humans. You know, we don't know if one of their little ones got shot by someone or caught in a trap in that same area. And maybe they're just trying to get back at people. Well, if you take, think about it, if you take the best attributes of a wild animal, a bear, a cougar, a coyote, and then you take the the thinking and reasoning ability and the tool making and, and stuff of a human and you combine those, do you have, a, is there a more perfect creature in this world? Absolutely not. That is, that is the pinnacle. That is the top of the food chain. That is, that is, that is it. We pale in comparison to something like that. So the respect for me anyway, is huge, huge. Yeah. You know, and it seems like them having this opposable thumb on their hand keeps them from being like us, you know, building technology and advancing. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they use clubs to to hit. You know, I mean, they. I've, I've been watching a lot of great ape and, and and monkey videos and watching how they interact socially and and how they have learned to use some form of tools. You know, the ones that that strip off the leaves of a of a big stick and stick it in an ant hill and fill it with ants and pull it out and eat them all. Um, chimpanzees take club, make, you know, take sticks and clubs and use them as weapons. You know, I'm sure they can do, I don't think they, I don't think they have or really care about fire. Um, because why would they, they eat raw meat and they're warm with their fur and, and whatnot. But I, I think they use tools, you know, I think they, I think they use these sticks to dig, um, that's one thing that that guy has seen him doing on the beach is using a big stick and digging in the sand like a shovel for clams. So I think they adapt. I think they they overcome and adapt. I think I think they'll be here longer than we are because we're going to destroy ourselves with nuclear war and stuff. And they're just going to retreat to the woods and stay where they've always been for thousands of years. And they'll be here long after we're gone. And that's where the respect comes in that they have figured out how to, they, they are the true master of their domain. And uh, we will never figure that out. We're too greedy. Yeah, they seem to have an understanding of what our future will be and what we're made of. And that's kind of destruction and chaos. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think they come in when they need to. Um, I'm not a believer. I, I, people always tell me, well, if, if you go with a kind heart and they'll pick, they pick who they want to show themselves to. I don't think so. I think they just get a little bit careless when they cross a road. I think that the juveniles may have a fun, may play games with, with the, with the humans, you know, with peak and hide and seek and, and uh, running across the road and stuff like that. I think that's more juvenile because I think they act a lot like our teenagers do, right? When we were teenagers, we did stupid stuff that we'd never do now. And I think it's the same way. And I think they probably get reprimanded too, you know, but I don't believe in that you're chosen to see one. Um, I just think you just got to be at the right place at the right time. And the more places you put yourself, obviously there's a better chance of you seeing them. But how many people that don't believe are just driving down the road and have one right in front of their car, right? And then how many researchers like Rene Duhidden that never saw one in his 40 years of being out in the woods every day. So Sasquatch are where they are. You just, yeah, absolutely. You know, they're, they're going to be where they are. There's no rhyme or reason. You know, you can, like I said, you can, you can increase your possibilities of seeing one if you go where the habitat will support a large carnivore or even an omnivore. I'm sure they live on, on a lot of uh, uh, berries and, and bushes and stuff and leaves. But first off, go where big animals can survive, and that's your stepping off point, and uh, you'll increase your chance. But here, here I am on my property by the beach and there it is so they are where you find them right yeah absolutely and it does seem like these creatures become distracted at times and we'll get glimpses of them yeah uh, and uh, the trail cam thing um you know people hide them in logs and stuff the thing is you can hide them all you want they still put out electromagnetic field you can they i saw a guy hide one in a log cover it with with moss just enough for a peephole to come out and he walked 30 feet away with a with a uh, uh emf meter and that thing just pegged so he's not hiding nothing right yeah he's if you're way more sensitive to that than we are yeah absolutely and if you're putting it in an area that has sasquatch more than likely they're watching you from somewhere now i did uh, this one person i was talking to 
they have activity on their property and they don't want it because it, it's getting their chickens and and stuff like that. And they're like, how do we get rid of them? And I told them and, jo- and jokingly, I said, put up trail cams. And they said, well, we know they're there. We don't need to see them. I said, no, 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 no. You're not going to see them. They're going to leave because they know the trail cams are there. They don't want to be seen. And I said it jokingly, but think about it. If you've got a Sasquatch problem and you've got them coming onto your property and you want to get rid of them, man, just nail that property with game cams. Apparently that's one, one trigger to get them to leave. Yeah. When the IR light goes off, it's like a strobe light for them. We can't see it, but animals can see it. Right. So I think that would be a pretty, instead of, instead of getting pictures of them, I think that's kind of like an anti Sasquatch device. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, the one I bought, I'm looking at it right here. It's a, uh, I haven't even opened it yet. I got it. It's a stealth cam reactor, cellular trail cam. Um, I just want to make sure that people aren't coming onto my property. That's why I take a picture of the fire pit every time we leave and stuff like that. Um, if I caught something, I catch something, but it's going to be more deer and the occasional person that may wander on down my driveway. And that's what I want to know. But you never know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they'll let their guard down. Maybe the ones down there are like the deer that are really, they don't really get threatened with much, you know, there's no hunting. So nobody down there is walking through the woods with guns. And that's a big thing. You know, smart, I don't care how smart they are. I think they can detect if you're carrying a weapon. I think they, I think they can see it. I think they know it's not something natural that's on your body. Yeah, absolutely. And if there's nobody walking around down ocean shores with guns and the deer are prevalent, and it's mostly retired people that live there year round that are in bed at eight o'clock at night. Man, you got the it's a free for all. You know, it's like party central for them down there. Yeah, it really is. And if you got a nature preserve like that nearby with no hunting, it's going to be great. Well, that's the other thing. So there's no hunting on the whole on that whole spit, but there's also a game preserve at the North Jetty, which is actually south of town. There's a big nature preserve down there. So, and that's where the deer go and come out of and go and come out of. So, yeah, I mean, this is, and it's not even hard to negotiate. They don't have to go up or down hills. It's all flat. It's easy walking, you know? I mean, if I was a Sasquatch, I would be down there. I would definitely be there. And then to have most of the community that's down there year round, just accept that they're there. What could be a better place for you? Yeah. And you have local people leaving out food, pies, you know, candy, (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah yeah there's a lot of, there's a lot of people down there that that leave stuff out now whether the sasquatch are getting it or the deer um we've had a bear walk right through our camp when we were sitting in our lawn chairs eating breakfast on a sunny sunday morning came out behind me in the bushes we jumped up and walked away came over and sniffed my chair sniffed my wife's chair and just kept on moseying on and went right back in the bushes on the other side of our property so yeah what i've was, noticed when it gets dark all the animals from the woods will come and check the house because I throw food out there and stuff right when it gets dark too. They all come yeah. and check throughout the night. Now here's one thing I have, and, and I've never seen a raccoon down there. Now we have them. We have a big raccoon problem here in the city where I live in Seattle. We have uh, cams on the outside of my house. And just this morning at three forty-eight in the morning, this big old fat raccoon I see every day walk through our yard to the back, but I've never seen a raccoon down ocean shores. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Okay. I, well, I hadn't even thought about that till just now. <laughs> yeah, when these creatures are around, most a lot of times you won't see things like squirrels and raccoons and other wildlife around. Right. Well, okay, Miguel, this has been pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, this covers your story, and um, we're finished now. I, I really appreciate you sharing your experience with me on the channel. Yeah, no problem. I really appreciate you listening to me. Yeah, absolutely. You'll have to tune back in with me and let me know how that stealth cam does. Maybe send yeah. me a photo or something. Yeah, I'm going to, we'll probably go within the next month. We'll probably go down to our property and I'll put it on down there. Like I said, I'm just looking at it now. It's pretty cool. I ordered the uh, solar panel for it so it stays charged year round. I don't have to replace batteries. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right, Alan. Well, I appreciate you you taking the time to talk to me and you have a great day sir yeah you too all right we'll talk later bye all right that was another excellent eyesight and report logged down for the channel 
I would be freaked out as well if I seen them spider crawl. I know they use all fours, so the spider crawl is probably to stay down low and to get out of there super quick. It seems like Sasquatch enjoy hanging out at small cabins where people rarely visit. Maybe they're looking for food or just checking to see if anyone is around. I think overall, the Sasquatch just want to be left alone and we need to learn how to live alongside these creatures so there isn't any future confrontation. What do you guys think? Do you believe the Sasquatch deserve a fair chance to live alongside human beings? Or do you think we should just exterminate them like rats? What's your opinion? What's your thoughts? And comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this man's encounter as much as I did. It really gave me a better perception of how the Sasquatch move around us and avoid being spotted. Alright, I'm probably going to sleep with the light on tonight. This encounter kind of freaked me out. But anyways, that's all I have for today. I hope to see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.